Thank you for tuning in to the BB Loss Blueprint. I'm Adam Zorkelbach, and here with me is our Director of Regulatory Affairs, Rob Nockenhauer. And today we're going to be talking about the evolution of waiver approvals and how they have become more valuable over time. Rob, before we get into the details, can we get a high level overview of some of the waivers we're going to be talking about today? Yeah, you bet. Uh, thanks, Adam. So what we're going to be talking about today are the three types that we've uh, been working with here at Census, and that is the uh, location specific type of approval, which is where you, you have a known area where you're going to fly and you're going to get a permission to do operations in that particular area. Uh, and then the next is the performance based approval. Uh, that is the type of waiver where you are putting in front of the FAA a, a criteria that you as the operator are going to follow to identify and select the locations that you are, you are determining to be suitable for, for doing BB loss operations. And then the third type is the uh, also performance based, but uh, or it could be performance based. It could also be location specific, but low altitude shielding. And so what low altitude shielding is, is those are uh, the types of waivers that we can uh, help clients to get that allow them to do operations at where they're leveraging the ground or infrastructure like power lines and that sort of thing to uh, to shield the the uh, drone from other air traffic that might be operating in the vicinity of where you're conducting the flight operation. And the main advantage of that one is, of course, that you are you can conduct those operations leveraging that low altitude shielding to not have to use visual observers to uh, augment your airspace awareness. Yeah, and just to give a little back history on Census, you know, we were founded in, in 2017 with the mission of really making commercial BB loss common. And not only has our development of our aircraft and the crafting of our waivers developed, you know, over many, many years since 2017, but so has the regulation has changed. So without without taking up too much time, Rob, I'll be quiet and I'll let you take it away. If you want to go ahead and dive into these details of each of the waivers and kind of tell us how they've evolved over time and how they've become more valuable. Yeah, you bet. This is great. It's um, it's been an interesting journey for sure. You know, so in, in 2016, uh, prior to the the founding of Census, uh, Part 107 was released by the FAA, and that was the uh, basically the foundation for for the commercial operations that that many uh, commercial drone operators are using to this day. And so what Part 107 gave us the ability to do was to conduct operations in fairly constrained fashion, uh, but there was also this pathway to apply for waivers to allow operators to seek permissions to do more complex operations. And, and as you've noted, Adam, uh, Census was founded in 2017 on the premise of being able to put together a longer range aircraft. So, so we started off as a fixed wing drone manufacturer without the VTOL component, um, focused solely on, on running those longer range flight operations. Uh, so we had some success uh, out of the gate of getting permissions to do those op operations uh, at first. But uh, as, as you probably know and recall, uh, getting waivers back in those early days of part 107 was a, a challenge and um, and the, pathway to actually get the permissions to do those things was was pretty convoluted. I mean, the, the FAA was not exactly forthcoming with information and, and guidance about how to actually get the uh, your safety cases devolved, evolved in a way that would satisfy their requirements. Um, what's been fortuitous for, for all of us in the industry is that the FAA has become uh, more open over the past six, seven years now. And uh, uh, they, they now communicate with operators like you know, like like census or actually, so we're we're a manufacturer. We also do operations, but uh, but they're they're you know you can actually talk to people at the FAA to get ideas about how to to evolve your safety case in a way that's going to be acceptable. And and there's more of a, a back and forth where you can be uh, you can reason out certain types of ideas. And so at census, what we did is we went forward for a long time, um, you know, doing these location specific operational uh, requests and. What we learned in that process is that there were some common threads in that. So, you know, the the you know certain types of areas were kind of coming up and again and again. Certain focuses on on different elements, uh, in particular, thinking about view sheds of where uh, you know your visual observers are placed or your ground station is placed um, to satisfy the requirement that we can effectively manage the airspace 
or the air risk, uh, you know, for an operation at any point because we have clear view to the sky. Um, so as we started to identify those um, commonalities, we were able to put together the performance-based criteria uh, back in uh, the summer of 2022, where we, you know, were able to socialize that with the with the, uh, the the waiver review team and get the permission to do uh, performance-based operations uh, with visual observers initially. Um, that was a big change and has certainly helped a lot of our clients and ourselves frankly i mean we've run at this point uh, about a half a dozen different uh bb loss demonstration operations uh, under our waivers and uh it, it, and it's been a big you know a game changer for us so what it means is that the, the difference is you know if you have that process that's approved by the faa you don't have to go through the 60 to 90 day plus uh review cycle for every new location that you want to do you simply just make sure that your operation fits the criteria that's outlined in your waiver, your approved waiver, and then you can go run that operation. Um, at the beginning of 2023, so about a year ago, we were granted our first uh, shielded operations approval uh, that allowed us to do operations shielded at 50 feet at that point in time from uh, the infrastructure. Uh, in that case, we were, you know, it was the ground or infrastructure that we were flying over uh, for our aircraft uh, operating at 50 feet it was uh it's really close and uh so you know unless you know that the terrain is dead flat and you can trust your terrain databases fully and and the accuracy of the of the the, the gps in the z direction which is you know there's there's enough variability there where you, you can you can find yourself doing mission planning and get yourself a little closer than comfort to uh to the structures that you're you lose using to shield your aircraft operations um Throughout the course of 2023, we were granted higher altitude approvals. Uh, so, you know, ultimately our, the operating approval that we're operating at the, under the moment is uh, at 75 feet uh, and a few of our clients now hold uh, operational approvals up to 100 feet um, above the infrastructure. So that that's, <clears throat> it, it's an exciting time. Uh, you know, certainly what we're looking to do, you know, moving forward is is to, to you know, we'll continue to work with the FAA and leverage uh, procedural and technology solutions to kind of get to even uh, lower restrictive uh, BVLS operations. Yeah, and and kind of just to summarize, you know, moving from, you know, location-based waivers where you have to apply every time, and like you said, you know, wait those 30, 60 to 90 days for the approval to mm -hmm. finally be able to get one that allows you to operate anywhere under a certain safety case um, to the performance-based side. And then now jumping to 2023 where we can do the shielded ops, um, essentially where we can operate anywhere from 50 to some of our clients with 100 feet above uh, infrastructure that can operate even without VOs, once again, depending on the safety case. But right. that value just keeps building and building and building for the operator uh, in terms of what they're able to actually accomplish um, with the waivers. And, you know, the technology like the Centero 5 uh, is, is really kind of going along with it, you know, being able to fly 50 miles point to point in a shielded operation uh, over a cellular network is is kind of a dream, I would say, for for some long linear inspection of power lines, roadways, waterways. Um, so I'm really excited to see how our clients are going to utilize this and the industry is going to grab hold. Yeah, agreed. And, and and just to kind of echo that sentiment, you know, when the Centero Five, when we released that in the summer of 23. Um, you know, that that L site halo system that it gives us that ability to, to fly those longer ranges and, and you know, lo loosening the restrictions of the requirements for visual observers has been uh, uh, really starting to kind of turn to get get to a place where our our users are really starting to have a, a measurable ROI on, on being able to conduct these operations. It's, it's a fantastic new direction. So, yeah. Well, thanks for hopping on, Rob. Thanks for, for giving us the, the info on the value of the waivers and kind of how they've evolved over the last few years. Um, make sure you tune in next week. Uh, we're going to be diving deeper into shielded operations, um, kind of how you can leverage them yourselves, and even going over one of our most recent operations in South Florida, uh, which we we leverage the shielded uh, wheel waiver. So tune in next week. Once again, thanks for hopping on, Rob. All right. Thanks, Adam. Take care. Thanks.